the different types of hands. The elementary hand is rarely seen, but it's easy to identify because of a short thumb, wide palm, and thick, short fingers. The hand can be a bit stiff. It tends to be found among those who work a lot with their hands as opposed to their minds. The square hand. The square hand is the practical working hand. It is really rectangular overall, but the palm is square and the fingers have a squared off appearance at the fingertips. People with these hands want everything organized with specific plans. Very forceful and determined to fulfill the requisites for living and the pursuit of happiness. The conical hand. The conical hand tapers gently from base to fingertips. Each finger tapers to an elliptical tip. This is the inspirational type. They are exuberant and their enthusiasm for the artistic is very evident. They love companionship and are very social minded. They must be encouraged to activate their ideas. The spatulate hand. The spatulate hand represents a very active person. The entire appearance of the hand is suggestive of the spatula. There are two types. One palm is wider at the wrist than at the base of the fingers. The second type is the reverse wider at the top than at the wrist. The fingertips are spatulate. The hand spreads out fan-shaped. It denotes great activity. It can be found in all kinds of work, from artisan to artist. The energetic laborer may excel in sports. The architect may have revolutionary ideas. But always there is the urge to be active, to do something more, to be original. The idealistic hand is also called the psychic hand. In its purest form, the fingers are pointed. The hand is long, narrow, and thin. This is the intuitive mind, the idealist. Extremists of religious cults and philosophies may be found with these hands. They can become martyrs to their own ideas. The mixed hand. Most hands are mixed. The square hands may have two or three different types of fingers. The spatula may have only two or so that vary. It is necessary to analyze the fingers carefully, then combine the findings. The thumb is the indicator. If it is square, just as an example, a practical aspect will modify or regulate any idealism that might be on a pointed first finger or a spatula third finger which would partake in a speculative nature. This is the way to diagnose a thumb and finger relationship with a specific problem hand. The philosophical hand. This is an old classification of hands that are really square or conical, but always have knots on both joints of all of the fingers and the thumb joint. The hand has a long, lean appearance. It represents the thinker, one who wants to weigh every question carefully. Many teachers have this type of hand. 
The fingertips can vary, square or conic. Either way, these are the men and women who seek knowledge. The flexibility of the hand is also important. Very flexible hands have fingers that bend backward, almost curling, some almost at right angles to the palm. These are extremists who like to live an unrestrained, almost unconventional life, usually very talented. Medium flexibility. The fingers bend back slightly, at least noticeably. These belong to people who are reasonable and are willing to meet you halfway in a business agreement. Stiff hands will not bend, neither will their owners. They are unyielding and hard to convince, but once they give their word, they abide by it. Texture of hands. Flabby hands are loose skinned and swollen in feeling them. Temperament is variable, sometimes genial, sometimes irritable. Soft hands feel limp and listless to the touch. Although they detest manual labor, they must not be underrated. Many successful and famous people have just such hands. Firm hands belong to determined people who accept the good with the bad, but work with conviction in every effort. Hard hands are stiff to the touch. Their owners are resolute and hard to convince. Unusually obdurate, but with good lines and well-shaped thumbs, they listen to reason. The thumb is the index to the character of the hand. Placed low with a wide thumb angle, careless and irresponsible. High on the hand and difficult to move. Cautiousness varying to stubbornness. Medium set adaptability. The average thumb should extend to the middle of the bottom phalange of the first finger. Any thumb lower than this is considered short. A thumb longer than this is considered longer and therefore more forceful. If a hand has weak lines, a long thumb would strengthen the intellectual needs. The thumb has three parts, first, second, and third phalanges. The third is the Mount of Venus and part of the palm proper. It represents love, affection, and sympathy as described under the mounts. The first phalange represents willpower. The second, reasoning ability. If the first phalange is longer, willpower is stronger. If the thumb is square, there is practical application. If conical, the artistic viewpoint. If pointed, idealistic. A second phalange, which is too short, denotes a tactless person and a lack of reasoning. The thumb is normally broader than it is thick. If it is as thick as it is broad, an unbalanced, violent nature. Slender thumbs, patience. A wasted second flange, great understanding and sympathy for both people and creatures. A knotty joint on the thumb, the analytical mind. A smooth joint impulsiveness. Flexibility of the thumb denotes the intensity of logic and willpower indicated in the palm. 
A stiff thumb adds determination, stubbornness, extremely supple, is talented and extremists. Moderate pliability is reasonable and good understanding.